In this session, we shall be having a look at how we value inventory using the average cost method, or AVCO. Now, AVCO is one of the main methods of valuing inventory, uh, the two other methods being FIFO and LIFO. As the name implies, um, we use AVCO to value inventory at the average cost of the inventory. Now, because we're using average costs, um, they don't always round down to the nearest penny when we're calculating costs per unit. So, in many cases, you might have to use um, three or more decimal places when calculating the average cost per unit. Now on the screen at the moment we have an example of a stock card. This is a document that organisations use in order to record um, levels of stock that it receives, issues and holds at any given time. On the left hand side we have a column recording the date of different transactions, whether they're purchases of stocks or issues or sales of stocks. To the right of the date column, we have three columns where we would record materials that have been purchased on a particular day. So there we will record the quantity that's been bought, the cost per unit um, of the items that have been bought, and the total cost. Obviously, the total cost will simply be the quantity multiplied by the cost per unit. To the right of that, we have a further three columns. This is where we record issues of stock. So again, we will record the quantity that's issued, the associated cost um, per unit, and the total cost associated with those items that have been issued. Lastly, we have two columns um, recording the balance of stock at um, at the end of any transaction. Now some uh, stock cards may use three columns here but we're just going to have a look at the two column format. We will record the quantity of stock that's held at any given time and the total cost associated with that. So let's have a look at a worked example of how we would complete a stock card using AVCO. In our example, on the 1st of February 2013, the business had an inventory of product X of 20 units, which cost it in total to £42. So when we look at our stock card, we'll have um, the 1st of February 2013 recorded in the date. Now, as this is just a balance brought forward, we'll have nothing in the receipts or issues column, but we will record the 20 units held and the associated cost in the balance columns. What happens then is on the, the 2nd of February 2013, the business buys 100 units of Product X at a cost of £2 per unit. So we're going to be entering details into the receipts columns as well as the balance columns. So we record the date, and then in the receipt columns, we'll record the 100 units purchased, the cost per unit, and the total cost, which of course is just the quantity multiplied by the cost per unit. There's nothing to go in the issues columns, and in the balance columns, well, we previously had 20 units, we've purchased 100 units, so we obviously now have 120 units on hand. Likewise, we originally had units that cost us £42, we've purchased some more that cost us 200 so overall we've got a cost of £242. Next, we um, buy another 120 units of product tax this time at a cost of £2.20 per unit. So again, we record the date of the transaction, we'll record the quantity bought, the cost per unit, and calculate the total cost. Again, 
we will then recalculate the balance of product X that we have at the end of that transaction. So we now have 240 units and they've cost overall £506. Our next transaction occurs on the 20th of February and here the business issues or sells 140 units of product X. Well, we're going to be completing uh, the issues columns and the balance columns are in our stock card. We know that 140 units are going to be sold or come out of, uh, out of the business. Um, but we need to calculate what the associated cost of those units will be. We're using AVCO, so what we will do is we will calculate the average cost per unit of the stock that we have before this transaction occurs. So at the end of our previous transaction we had 240 units which cost in total £506. So per unit, that works out at £2.10.8 pence. And now we can, cal uh, we can complete the stock card for this transaction. So on the 20th of February, we have 140 units being issued. They have an associated cost per unit of £2.10.8 pence and a total cost of £295.12. The balance of um, our stock now falls to 100 units and the cost associated with that 100 units is £210.88. This is calculated by starting with the £506 that we had before this latest transaction and deducting the £295.12 that was associated with the issue of these 140 units. Our next transaction is a further purchase of units, in this case 80 units of product tax at a cost of £2.50 per unit. So again, as before, we record the date of the transaction and as it's a purchase, we'll record 80 units in the receipts um, quantity column, £2.50 per unit and a total cost of £200. Our balance now moves to 180 units and a total cost of £410.88. Our final transaction occurs on the 26th of February and in this case the business is issuing 110 units of product tax. So as before we need to calculate the average cost per unit. Now um, just before this transaction took place we had 180 units which cost us a total of £410.88. So we have a cost per unit of £2.283. We can now use that average cost in order to complete our stock table. So on the 26th of February we have 110 units being issued. They have an associated cost per unit of £2.283 and a total cost of £251.13. This then leaves us with 70 units in stock with an associated cost of £159.75 which is calculated as the cost before the transaction of £410.88 minus the cost associated with this transaction of £251.13.